Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to share with you the most horrific guitars I can find on Reverb.com. Now, when I think of awful guitars, my mind first goes to dirty, cheap guitars that have been neglected for years. But when you have a database as large as the online marketplace that is Reverb, you can get to a whole other level of horrendous. Be warned, you will never be able to unsee these instruments and you should prepare yourself for the worst. These listings are all real, let's dive in. To kick things off, we have a Yamaha Pacifica in a fur finish that sold for $260. The Pacificas are a fine lower end guitar. I have no issue with them. I do have a problem with the fact that somebody decided to cover this one in rabbit fur. Now, I'm quite against the unnecessary killing of animals. Things like real rabbit fur rub me the wrong way, but if the fuzzy little bunny was murdered in a humane way and used for food, I'm more okay with it, even though I would never want Thumper's Hide covering my instrument. I mean, imagine playing a gig with this thing. The fur would inhale your sweat and the smells of the club, especially considering the listing comes from Florida, which as far as I know, is a place known for creating sweat and smells. It also seems like it's just patched together. A rabbit wouldn't fit nicely around a guitar, so it looks like the taxidermist slash guitar finisher just glued chunks of it to the instrument. Good luck to whoever made this. Good luck to whoever bought it. May God have mercy on your souls. Next up, we have the 1995 ESP M2 Deluxe Custom Shop OJ Simpson Mugshot Guitar. You may be wondering why someone would have commissioned legendary guitar artist Chris Compton to paint a picture of the Juices Mugshot on a guitar. I'm wondering the same thing too. It's certainly a high-end guitar, and maybe the best thing about it is the display case that looks like a jail cell. I mean, I suppose if you're an avid enthusiast of unconvicted killers, this guitar could be of interest to you. And if so, good news, there has been a 17% price decrease. It is now only $6,250. Moving on, we have a Lauren Acoustic painted by Jerry. To be honest, I kind of love this one, even though it's pretty awful. Here's the description. Jerry was bored one day. He is an interesting customer, and that's a whole other story. So I let him take a natural finished Lauren I had sitting around because I got a couple that have been around quite some time. This is what he came up with in his artistic venture. It is still structurally sound and plays, but fret edges down the neck are rough, more of a looker if you happen to like this look than a player. You gotta love the absurdity of this situation. One day, Jerry waltzes into a guitar store, asks if he can paint a guitar. The owner says, yeah, Jer, go for it. And he comes up with this crazy design, which you can now buy for $150. Totally absurd, pretty horrible, but kind of charming. If you start looking through the custom paint jobs on Reverb, there are some real gems. Take, for example, this guy. You're seeing what I'm seeing. There's no need for additional comment here. Alternatively, how about this PVT-15 with custom folk art? Which to be fair, I think would actually be pretty cool in any year before 2020, as all I see now is a guitar with coronaviruses all over it. Moving on, we've got a guitar that is the thing of nightmares, right out of a horror movie, the Tetanus Caster. The Luthier made this out of 100 year old nails and seems to have truly embraced the awfulness of this guitar in all the best ways. He even wrote a lovely tetanus caster fanfic in the description. The band takes the stage and starts playing. On a stand with a strategically placed backlight and a little fog sits the guitar made of nails. None of the band members, not even the lead shredder, acknowledges the guitar is there, but the audience sees it. Near the end of the show, the audience assumes it's only a prop, but as they start playing the epic finale of their set, the lead guitarist picks up the guitar made of nails plugs it in, they take their most epic, blistering solo of the evening on this guitar, and of course, the crowd goes wild. With the help of a carefully placed packet of fake blood, there is now blood dripping down their arm, all over the guitar and on the stage. No one will forget this show. The seller ends with a disclaimer, I and my company are not responsible for injuries sustained while using this guitar. And for $2,000, this experience can be yours. My next horrible guitar on Reverb is the Fender Custom Shop Supreme All White Strat. This guitar sells for a whopping $7,100, about the same value as my car. Why is it so expensive, you may ask? Because this guitar has the logo of the clothing manufacturer Supreme on it, which if I'm not mistaken, is a high-end fashion brand that the kids of today are now into. Or maybe it's become out of style. I really don't know. I'm 32 and haven't been with it since the 90s. 
and I'm not even sure I was with it then. I feel like even if you desperately wanted this guitar, you could get a white Strat, put a Supreme sticker on it, and end up with something that's more or less the same for a fraction of the price. This is expensive for the sake of being expensive. When I was younger, I knew this kid who, when he asked his wealthy dad for a guitar, his dad went out and bought him a beautiful custom shop Les Paul, which he lost interest in shortly after. He neglected this wonderful instrument until he sold it for pot money a few years later. This guitar is made for that kind of person. This next guitar hurts me more than any of the others. It is a horrifically mangled 1970 Fender Telecaster. Now, if you've watched my channel for a bit, you would know that I'm a bit of a Tele guy. My number one guitar is a Telecaster, and I consider the model to be a near-perfect guitar. At some point, the owner of this guitar decided that he would take a saw to his lovely Tele and hack away at the body. This would have been such a wonderfully aged instrument now, but instead it resembles the Millennium Falcon if the Millennium Falcon were a guitar that went through the wood chipper. Truly a shame. And last for today is the 1984 Nikon Jackson, which I'm going to go ahead and say is the winner of the Awful Taste But Great Execution Award. This guitar is clearly meant to look like a camera, and the artist definitely succeeded in that, but it raises the question, why? It's $4,000, and believe it or not, there are two of them in existence, which means not one, but two people spend a large amount of money on buying a guitar that looks like a camera. I hate it, but I also own a reverse flying V, so what do I know? Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the worst guitars that I could find on Reverb.com. If you happen to like any of these guitars, power to you. You gotta live your life as you see fit. And you know what they say, one person's trash is the next person's treasure, even if that second person is clearly lacking in taste. If you like what I do, a great way to support my work is heading over to www.shopsamuraiguitarist.com and picking up some of that sweet, sweet Sammy G merch. Alternatively, you can check out my course platform where I teach my system of playing guitar over www.samuraiguitartheory.com. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. And if you want to let me know what you thought about any of these guitars, let me know in the comment section. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you soon.